today I am reviewing She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. I'm crazy about historical fantasy and She Who Became the Sun is one of the best I've read in recent memory. It is also as far removed from the previous historical fantasy I read, The Night Circus. During the Red Turban Rebellion against the Mongol Yuan dynasty into the ever so slightly fantastic, Shelley Parker Chan rewrites history in more than one ways. The most defining that this would-be progenitor of the Ming dynasty, Zhu Chongba, dies at the onset of the novel, his identity and destiny taken up by his nameless sister, whose own fate is to become nothing. In taking up the name, Zhu believes herself capable of also claiming her brother's destiny for herself. In some ways, she who became the son is both a confirmation of these hopes and a renouncement of the very way the destiny and fate work and are perceived. Much about the way in which this novel is written balks at typical fantasy conventions. Time passes at a breakneck pace, events folding and unfolding with a swiftness and brutality you never quite learn to expect. Massive battles are built up to, then dismissed with a few lines describing the outcome, concentrating on how these how on uh, concentrating on how this outcome affects the increasingly influential players on both the Mongol and the Red Turban sides of an ever more brutal conflict. You might find this anticlimactic if you read fantasy for the gritty visceral descriptions, the blood-pounding glory and horror of combat. For that, I'll happily point you to Joe Abercrombie, who does it better than nearly anyone else, or if you care for another Asian-inspired and Chinese-centered fantasy series of novels that does excellent combat and excellent magic, this would have to be The Poppy Wars. Excellent. I did my hat off to that one. Parker Chan's novel has different aims in mind, and she succeeds in those, creating characters who are heart-achingly human, locked into destinies of their own making, shaped by them as they are shaped by the culture of the times. Another way in which Parker Chan dismisses typical conventions and then steps outside the genre conventions is with POV, point of view. Changes in that often come with a jolt, rather than divided into clear-cut chapters for each main character, as, say, George R. R. Martin does in his A Song of Ice and Fire books. One chapter might jump between three, four different perspectives in She Who Became the Sun, creating at times a stereoscopic view of key scenes. At other times, this technique stumbles, creating some confusion, even a sense of whiplash. Ultimately, I enjoyed this far more than I disliked it, though I can see how some might take issue with it. This is also excellent queer fantasy, in that it captures forbidden yearning in so breathtakingly beautiful a way. Desire is a central theme to She Who Became, and for good reason. It is what drives all our main characters, as well as the novel's finest antagonists. The will to power defines Parker Chan's red turbans. Let's try this again, shall we? The will to power defines Parker Chan's red turbans as much as their fight against the Mongol Yuan dynasty, perhaps more. Chu herself desires authority over others as much as she desires survival itself, perhaps even more. The extent to which she will go to gain a place of prominence among the rebels is neither less nor more than what other among the rebels' leadership are willing to do. Make of that what you will. But I was telling you about the aspects of this novel which make it queer fantasy. Much of this can be seen not so much in Chu as in the eunuch general 
Wu Yang, whose complex relationship with the Mongol prince Essen, Wu Yang's former owner, master and friend, has so many twists and turns as to give you even more whiplash, but in a good way this time. On a side note, I adore Chu's first impression of the general. She saw someone who seemed neither male nor female, but another substance entirely. Something holy and powerfully of its own kind. The promise of difference made real. Natalie Norders narrates the audiobook, which is how I came to enjoy She Who Became the Sun. I first became acquainted with Nordis's work on the narration of the Bone Shard Daughter, and I continue to be in awe of the talent this narrator displays. Her range of voices, the smoothness of the delivery, the emotion she summons and imbues each character with. It makes for truly great listening if you enjoy the medium. That sounded like I was talking about the video game, the medium, which... Ah. Anyway, She Who Became the Sun is the first in a duology, leaving off at a place at once of triumph and of bitterness. I do not know when the second book will be coming out, but I know I will be there at launch, eager to listen to every last line. It's a good book, I recommend it. You should pick it up if you like Audible versions of books. This one is phenomenal. If not, I imagine the text reads just as well. And let me know, have you read any Chinese-inspired fantasy before? Have you read uh, R.F. Kuang's The Poppy War, which I mentioned earlier? Perhaps some others? Let me know. And also, as always, if you have any books you'd like to hear my thoughts on, just say so in the comments down below. Meanwhile, I have but one more word for you, and it is subscribe. I demand it. I will see you next time. Bye! Oh, and don't forget to smash that like button.